Is John Jones ruining the heavyweight division? Before we get into that, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe as we have brand new videos every single week. So John Jones was supposed to fight Stipe Miocic back at UFC 295, but he's pulled out due to a pec injury, and it seems like he won't be back for quite some time. And now he's left a heavyweight division in limbo. But it seems that he wants to only fight Stipe and isn't interested in fighting any of the contenders. So, Mark, my first question to you is, are you still interested in seeing Stipe versus John Jones? Four years ago, I was. But now, it's um, there's no interest there. I don't think a lot of fans are either. The, the one at UFC 295 that was scheduled, unfortunately, injuries happened, so you can't do anything about it. That just is what it is. Mm. Fans were more, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get on board with this. Now, we've had an interim champion since then. I think even fan interest has just absolutely took a nosedive. Yeah. Everyone knows that John could retire after beating Stipe for the legacy. He doesn't have anything else to prove. Whether you love or hate John Jones, he's got one of the most impressive resumes on there in the entire UFC and yeah. the way that he was just dismantling these guys to get one more fight with the heavyweight goat, Stipe Miocic and ride off into the sunset. I don't think anyone could discredit him for that. It's just annoying that it's taking so long when you've got other contenders that are chomping at the bit in order to get that title. What do you think? Do you think, are you interested? Are you bothered? <sighs> I am interested in the sense of, yes. I mean, it'd be a fun fight just purely for legacy value, but I I think other fights really outweigh the interest for me, you know, like Aspinall, you know. Um mm. he's good to go. He is the rightful champion, right? He it's his shot. And so that's the big difficulty with this, isn't it? Yes, in a sense I'm interested, but at the same time I'm completely not. But even though you and I aren't interested in this fight, Mark, do you think a more mainstream audience will be? Because of course you and I love Tom, but for legacy. John Jones is, you know, going to face the best heavyweight of all time in Stipe. And so that means so much more for his legacy, doesn't it? So do you think John Jones will be more focused on his legacy or on what the fans are wanting or what the more uh, core fans are wanting? Well, like I said, John's got nothing else to prove. He could retire right now and he will always be remembered as one of the best ever to step into the octagon. So it's... It's what he wants. I don't think he'll he'll really care. He does, he has nothing to prove to anyone. There's always going to be a new contender in, like we said now, Tom Aspinall. He's the interim champion. That's the way it's meant to go. When the champion's temporarily out, you get an interim champion acting as it. Mm. And then obviously try and combine the two together as soon as you can. But when there's other fights going on, there are other ones in the pipeline, i.e. John versus Stipe, you're like, where does that leave Aspinall? You're not, surely you're not meant to defend an interim belt. That's not the wow. way it goes, surely. No, he shouldn't be. You know, it makes him the rightful number one contender and he should be next in line. But it, it's tricky because it seems the UFC are not interested in stripping John Jones, are they? You know, they seem so focused on putting this title fight with him versus Stipe. And I think that's why it seems to show to me that the sort of more mainstream audience is more interested in um, seeing John Jones versus Stipe opposed to Aspinall because say like you know like I said you and I love Aspinall you know he's ge genuinely he's my favorite current fighter at the moment you know I, I want to see him as much as possible but you know until last year outside of the UK he wasn't that big name you know yeah. until he had his last fight in November so it's like well I can see why the UFC aren't necessarily interested in pushing that fight and sort of the respect that they have for Stipe and for John Jones. But do you think that John Jones should follow in Yuri Prohashka's footsteps and vacate the title? Yeah, Yuri, like Jamal did as well. I think he, mm. as soon, it's hard because a fighter on his way up or like Jamal or Yuri, as soon as he became champion, right, okay, I'm not going to hold up the division. I'm going to let this move on. I'm going to vacate the belt. With John Jones, when you've got as many title defences as he is, he does, and as big a name as he is, you think it does give him some leverage. You know, some fighters are just, they do have that little bit of privilege, don't they, mm. in order to bend the rules and do what they want. I think if that was a new champion and he tried doing this, they, they would have been stripped anyway. Yeah. But John has, has the, the opportunity to say, right, you know, I'm going to strip it. But then you go, well, why would he want to win the heavyweight title twice when he didn't lose it so you're like i get it but again just as a greedy fan you want to see the, the fighters 
more often, don't you? You know, it took John three years to come back to heavyweight yeah. already. And he was active before that. You know, we can't say that he weren't active at light heavyweight because he absolutely was. But that three-year gap, then to beat Cyril Garn, who didn't even show up, then we've got to wait another, what, two years is it going to be? Something like that until we see him again against Stipe. And Stipe hasn't fought since 2021 where he got viciously knocked out by a guy who isn't even in the UFC anymore and he'll had two boxing fights <laughs> since then. Where's the attraction in this now? Yeah. Like, tell me where, as, again, for name value, you can imagine those dudes who'd watch a bit of UFC at the pub and they'd see John Jones versus Stipe. Go, oh, I used to watch them when I tuned in. So maybe yeah. I'll watch this one. But for people who would watch it every single week, you'd go, where's the attraction? What am I watching here? But that's exactly it, isn't it? You've hit the nail on the head there. This Stipe versus John Jones is for the guys who were sat around at the pub or a bar or whatever watching the UFC there. It, 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 that's what's going to bring in the extra numbers, isn't it? You know, and because we'll all watch Aspinall versus John Jones, you know, but we'll also watch John Jones versus Stipe. And then you'll get that extra level of people buying that pay per view because Stipe's got such that legacy, you know. You think, well, that's the problem. Money talks, doesn't it? And that's what the UFC are interested in. They don't care about our opinions, unfortunately. Um, did you see that Tom Aspinall recently met up with John Jones and had a bit of a face-off with him? Right. We're going to do this thing. I would hope so. I would love to, man. I would hope so. Respect, man. All the best. Respect. All the best. We'll do a quick picture. Sure. Yeah? Let's get it. A face-off. No, no, Just no. A... no, no, okay. No, no, no problem. No, no problem. No problem. He just looked like an absolute fan, didn't he? <laughs> he I really don't... did. You know, like more more handshakes than like you know, like uh, in Keenan and Kel, just more yeah. handshakes than in that one. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, cheers. Can we get a photo? Goes, yeah, yeah, sure. Anyway, a face off. Nah, nah. Okay, all right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that that's <laughs> the problem, isn't it? You're like uh, bloody Perry, wasn't he? Like, Can I have a jam sandwich, please? <laughs> Can I have a jam sandwich, please, Miss Person. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun to see that, and like he said, oh, I just want to say hello. He's I still think that Tom doesn't know just how close he is to being regarded as one of the best heavyweights. I mean, in our eyes, he's, he did that on his debut. In our oh, eyes, in our bias. The second he stepped in the octagon. <laughs> but I, like, you know, before, even a couple of fights ago, in his post-fight interview, he said, John Jones knows I exist. You're like, yeah. And now you're the interim, interim champion, you know, and, <laughs> and posing, I believe, to be his biggest threat. A lot of people, 100%. the ones who say, you know, oh, Tom doesn't have anything that John hasn't seen before, ignore them. I don't know what they're talking about. I know, about, about six foot five pounds and, and this big, all this muscle, John <laughs> Jones is going to get absolutely obliterated. But I think, the big problem, <laughs> I think the big problem with Tom, though, when he met John Jones, like you were saying, he seemed too much of a fan and he clearly respects John Jones a lot. You know, who cares about what John Jones is outside of the octagon? But he cares about what John Jones has done in the UFC and in his legacy in MMA. But Tom needs to stop respecting. He should have took his opportunity there. Should have gone up. All right, John, nice to meet you. Let's get a photo. And he should have just turned around and did a face off with him there. And then don't ask him for one. Do it. Get in John Jones's face. Make this clear who you are. You're there to knock him out and take his title. <laughs> don't give him any other option. Take that opportunity, Tom. Don't. This, it away. this sounds like a, a wrestling promo. You're like, like a Randy Orton. I just want a picture. And then next minute, RKO out of nowhere, straight away. That's it. And then he goes over him with the belt like this. That's exactly what you want. Poetry. I do. I do what? want that, though. I do. I, and, yeah. a heel I turn is what you want, Dwayne. Yeah, heel <laughs> turn from Tom. Yeah. And you just come out, smash him over with a steel chair. But, but the issue is, because it, it doesn't make look, Tom look weak because he's not. You know, he's this big bloody massive bloke but it made him look like a fan and he shouldn't be a fan he should be a fighter and he's going to take it off him he needs to be a bit firmer with it but you know what do i bloody know you know tom aspinall's the interim champion i'm just some fat guy talking about him on the internet you know <laughs> <laughs> we're allowed to though that's what fans are exactly. allowed to do. Yeah, 100%. But do you think mark we'll ever get to see john jones versus Tom Aspinall, or do you think that John's after he defeats um, Stipe, he's going to just ride off into the sunset? I don't think we're ever going to see it. <sighs> I, I I've, said, I've said this since day dot, since this fight, you know, got announced. It's one that I'd love to see, and genuinely, I do believe that Tom gets it done. 
but I don't think John would want to take that risk at this late stage in his career. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the the huge, huge like blocks in his way, and I don't think he needs that. He needs to prove that in order to be considered one of the best. The the thing is, you go well. Imagine if this fight did happen and John beat Tom, which I know breaks our heart, and then there's someone else, like I don't know, who's someone else in the heavyweight division who's coming forward. You're like, he's a monster. There's always going to be that new contender, so there's never going to be a good time for John to just retire and for everyone to be happy going, yep, he cleaned out the division, so he, he can he can just go. You know, there's never going to be a good time for him to do that. If he wants to, obviously it's his prerogative. I personally think that we should just forget about Stipe now um, and and just go straight for this fight, but absolutely it's not going to happen. I'll bet my no, ball. Well, I think you're probably right, and it, and it does pay me to say it because... Obviously, I'd love to see Aspinall versus John Jones. I think that has potential to be one of the biggest fights of all time. I'm I'm talking Khabib corner levels. I think it's genuinely could be that big. I think there's a lot of backing behind Tom and there's a lot of backing behind John Jones. And I think putting these two together could be an amazing moment. But why would John Jones do it, right? <laughs> what, what have you got to prove? What does he care? He can come out. He can beat up an old Stipe who's not fought in three years or whatever it's been and retire, sail off into the sunset. I'm the heavyweight goat. And then we can't argue with him go, yeah, all right, John, you are. But yeah. <laughs> who are we to say otherwise? And he doesn't care. What does he care? So why would he come out and risk himself against someone like Tom Aspinall, who's massive, got a fantastic striker, a fantastic grappler. He's got all the tools to win. And he can beat John Jones, and I can think he can beat him handedly. And I think John Jones knows that. So why even risk it, right? What's the benefit of doing it? Well, we we said this before, didn't we? We said I think if this fight was to ever come to fruition, I think the only person who could beat Tom is Tom, and yeah. that by that I mean the bright lights, the main event. This is John Jones you're against. If he sort of seizes up gets you know gets a bit nervous maybe something like that you know it, it's john jones in front of him this mega star i think yeah. that's the only way they can get beat but skill wise i think john's slowed down a hell of a lot recently you know like you look at his last couple of performances at the light heavyweight division they weren't dominating he looked, he looked clunky didn't he? he looked his movements looked labored and i know it's hard to tell with like the last fight he had with Garn, but he did look a lot slower than normal. He didn't seem to be as fast as he was. Um, but I think going back to your point there, I think that's the problem, isn't it? The only person who could beat Tom is Tom. And I think that's the issue with Tom being a big fan of John Jones. I think he's going to come out and respect him too much. And that's the thing, you know, it, you know, with martial arts, there does need to be that sense of respect there. But this is a combat sport. He needs to come out and he needs to just dominate him. Forget all this. It's not John Jones. It's just another man across the octagon and you're going to take the gold away from him. That's all he needs to look at it. But it's harder to say that, isn't it? You know, when you're face to face with one of your heroes, it's tricky, isn't it? What yeah, to do? it is tough. But like you say, I'd, be, I'd like it if he just dropped all this respectful manner and then just went in there and made his face lasagna. <laughs> but like another fight that seems to be sort of knocking around the one that tom seemed to want was fighting stipe for the interim title do you think that's a fight you'd be interested in stipe versus tom no <laughs> i think that you didn't even need to answer that long pause but, oh no mark's not interested in <laughs> i just i just think it, it, I think Stipe's day is over, and I mean this in the most respectful way as well, because Stipe, the names that are on his his resume are ridiculous as well. Oh, but yeah. you're forgetting that these were these were quite a while ago now, mm -hmm. and as much as I do like Stipe, I just I just think Father Time is creeping up, and against a young bull like Tom, I, I just don't think it's going to be a match, you know. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm absolutely not questioning Stipe's chin because he's in there again, you know, the people who's knocked him out. They are monsters. But in that sense of that, you know, why why can't Tom knock him out? And why would he want to? Again, one of his heroes. Why would he mm. want to do this? I think I'm surprised that Stipe is still on the actual active roster. He should just go off, do his firefighting. You know, it's fantastic for him. Um, and be remembered as what what his legacy was, you know. Uh, 
one of the all-time greats of all time, like of, of the heavyweight division. You know, he's got two wins over DC. You look at the other names on his list, like Overeem, the Doom, all these other people. Yeah. And Garno, he's even beaten Garno in the past, hasn't he? So what else does he have to prove as well himself? Unless he's, he's at the point, same with John Jones, where he could just take however many years off like he is doing and he can come back for a title shot and most of the fans will just go, okay. Yeah. But I'm, I'm more greedy and I'm more tore the line for this. Not that it matters what I think. <clears throat> Again, I'm just some fat guy on the internet, so it doesn't really matter what I think. <laughs> What about you? Yeah. Are you bothered for this? Um, In some ways, yes. I, I think I think if you really want to push Stipe versus John Jones, do this fight. Do Aspinall versus Stipe. Because if Stipe comes out and he beats Aspinall, then great. Well, not for me. Obviously, I'll cry my little eyes out. But great for the UFC. You can push that narrative even more. Look how good Stipe is. Now we've got a real fight between him and John Jones. And if Tom comes out and he absolutely mullers Stipe, then it proves the point that we never needed to see John Jones versus Stipe anyway. So then you're just pushing forward everything you need. So I think Tom versus Stipe would be a great fight. I mean, not for Stipe, he'll get absolutely battered, but it'll be a great fight for the UFC and you can really move that heavyweight division forward because, yeah, it's not John Jones's fault he's injured, you know, and he can't he can't just come back, you know, he does have to heal up. That's, you know, unfortunately, that's the way it works. So rather than waiting around, let's get this division moving. We've got two guys ready to go. Do it. Why are we waiting, right? Yeah, and I do agree with you in that sense, because like I said earlier, the whole idea of an interim belt is that you're next in line. But if we are yeah. bending the rules for certain people, well, why not bend the rules in the in the sense of the interim title and make mm. Stipe versus Tom then? But you've convinced me almost there, just in that sense of, well, why, don't, <laughs> why don't we keep this going then? This is a heavyweight yeah. super fight whilst the champion's away. Stipe ain't injured. He actually trained for that fight. He, he didn't pull out. You know, he didn't get exactly. injured. Tom, he's pretty much ready to go as well. But then there's talk of him fighting other people. And you say, no. well, where's Stipe then? Is he just is he just not going to fight? Is he just waiting out for John Jones? There's too many what-ifs and coulda, woulda, shouldas in the heavyweight division for me at the moment, which is a shame because it's, it's always been one of my favourite divisions just yeah. because of the heavy hitters in there yeah. and the characters. And it's becoming so much more well-rounded skill-wise that it's... it's Got, it's attracting a lot more eyes to it. You've got absolute monsters in there. But yeah. with silly stuff like this, I think it's really extinguishing that fire before it gets burning properly. You know, Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It really is. It feels like we're on this cusp of a new heavyweight division, right? And it's just, it's been getting dragged down and we're now stuck in limbo and it feels like John Jones is ruining now a second division. Unfortunately, he's just, he's that kind of guy who he just ruins everything he touches, you know? He ain't got the Midas touch. He's got the dog touch. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but there are other options for Tom as well. You know, Curtis Blades. <laughs> you know that, man? Yeah. I mean, you, when you said, oh, oh, he just absolutely ruins everything. He's not Frank Spencer. Have you got a glass? You cheat yourself out. <laughs> you know, just... <laughs> Everything <laughs> turns to shit. <laughs> well, like I was saying though, Curtis Blades called out um Tom Aspinall at UFC 299 after he defeated Jalton Almeida, you know, and we could get the fight that never was or the fight that was 15 seconds. Is that a fight that you're interested in seeing Blades versus Aspinall? Maybe yeah. at the Manchester card or something yeah, like that? Absolutely. Let's let's get this booked. Let's get it in. Great opportunity for Curtis Blades. Great for Tom to get his redemption, if you will, just to get that fight in the bag because they've got no no animosity uh, between each other. They don't hate each other. They've got no rivalry, no nothing. It's just a fair fair game. It was unfortunate what happened last time. Let's put a stamp on this and, and get it done, get it out of the way. I think that's the only fight I'd be interested in seeing Tom do like as a sidestep yeah. rather than aiming towards the title or one of the fighting one of the goats like Stipe, that's the only sort of sidestep that I'd be interested in seeing Tom do. And it's the only one he would that would make sense, I think. Um, yeah. I don't really think any other fight really makes You know, like if he was to go and fight uh, uh, Sergei Spivak or something, you're like, well, he's already beat him. What's the point in this? You're just throwing him in there just to yeah. stay active. Makes no sense, does it, a fight like that? Whereas with Blades versus Aspinall, they've got that history together. Curtis Blades, you know, he deserves it, I think, especially after you... He... A beat Jalton Almeida, 
But the problem is, it's like, well, it's kind of, you know, counter opposite of what I've just said. Like, oh, why is John Jones taking this risk? It doesn't make any sense. Why should Tom take this risk as well? Tom is next in line. If Tom just waits this out, he'll get a title shot. But he could risk it and put it all on the line against Curtis Blades. And I think that just shows what a warrior is, like a come true fighter. He's not going to just sit around and wait and hope that John Jones will be ready to fight him. He's got to keep moving. He's got to keep active. So I'm glad that he's looking at doing a fight like this. Um, and then there's... It, it is good, but... I, sorry, man. I, I always, I always no, no. think like with... <sighs> With these opportunities to wait, I'm always of the understanding that, you know, careers are very short mm. anyway, and the divisions move on. It's happened in other divisions. Do you remember, you know, Colby Covington waited for almost two years for a title shot for an absolute poor performance? Ring rust is real oh, as well. Fun. You want to keep that hunger alive. So that's what, that's the only reason I'd like to see Curtis versus Tom in the sense of just to keep that ball going. If, I mean, Curtis could do it as well. Curtis is a great fighter. I mean, I don't think he will, but it could do. You know, oh, yeah, he could. You know, so he really it, could. It, it's a great opportunity for a decent fight, and exactly like you said, put him on the headline of another Manchester card or something. Yeah. Look at the look at the revenue that happened a couple of years ago when he was against uh, Volkov. It was it was insane, insane yeah. card, fantastic. And I think they did another one in about a month later or something, didn't they? Something like that. Yeah, and then and it'd be great to see. I think it'd be a really really fun fight, and it keeps that division moving forward. And it'd feel like the real heavyweight title fight, right? It feels like that's the top of the division. Forget John Jones, forget Stipe. This is for the real gold. Um, but then there's also someone else chomping out at the bit to fight Thomas Bernal, Cyril Garn. He's the highest ranked heavyweight coming off a win. Do you think he should step up and fight Tom instead of someone like Curtis Blades? No, absolutely <laughs> not. I, I think yeah. we've, we've we've said this before. Look, Tom, I think, was calling out Cyril before, but Cyril was heading for a title shot. Now, he got beat by Francis. Fair enough, there's no shame in that. Uh, and then when he when he eventually, you know, he beat Tai Tuivasa, went up against John Jones. John Jones froze, did nothing, and then... Then he beat Sergey Spivak. Mm -hmm. Now he's all of a sudden calling for a title shot with Tom. And a fight with Tom, you're like, so now the roles are reversed. You don't want to give that opportunity back. So why would Tom? Again, that's another step back, I think. And I, I just I just don't think it'd make any sense whatsoever. Cyril surely has got to actually, he's got to fight someone else. Him and Curtis Blades, that'd be a great fight. Yeah, 100%. I, I think with Garn, he's avoided these top guys for a long time. He avoided Curtis Blades. He avoided Tom Aspinall. They've both been offered fights with him, and he said no. And if you're not willing to fight, Garn, then you don't get to now start calling the shots. That's not the way this works. The thing is, you can't lose two title fights on the trot and then expect to move up back into another title picture, especially if you got dominated by John Jones. I mean, that was it was an embarrassing performance, to be honest. Like, Cyril Garn looked awful it, it felt like maybe you should go to kickboxing forget about mma this is not for you like if you his inability to grapple was embarrassing it genuinely was so poor like he'd never been on the map before you can't do that in mma you need to be able to at least defend to a certain level i'm not saying you've got to be a monster grappler you don't have to come in and be khabib level but you have to be able to like least avoid basic stuff and he just put his head straight under his arm give it away for free it was it was one of the most anticlimactic returns that i've ever seen yeah in the sense that john even said afterwards didn't he, he said uh, i felt a little goofy in the stand-up which is fair enough he took three years off mm. garn came out and uh, did a groin strike about four seconds into the fight if you remember uh, I mean, you woke up a happy boy that morning because you had a fiver on John Jones by submission in round one. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call me Mystic Dwayne. But it was like, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your fifteen pounds, Dwayne. I did. <laughs> yeah. But like, <laughs> so he did, and obviously that fight ended, and it was just that's it. That's the return that we've been, we've been waiting for. Cyril really didn't show up, and I don't think you can you really get many opportunities for a second and a third go at that level how many more chances do you think you're going to get so you had that poor loss against john where he didn't even show up mm. and then he's gone and beat sergey spivak by amethysting him around around side at lug you're like how does that put you in line for a title shot Makes no sense, yours yeah. against francis which was a great fight it was competitive 
Then, obviously, it happened with John. It just it made no sense to me. Yeah, I agree. He does not deserve to be in a title picture. And I think if he is going to do that, he's going to have to fight the real contenders, you know, make him fight Pavlovich, Blade, Jolton Almeida. Then, after he's beat some of those guys, then you can look at him moving back into a title picture. You don't lose two title fights and then get another. It's not the way it works. And just sort of, I think... I get why Garn's avoiding these guys because it's his inability to grapple, isn't it? You know, he knows he's not well-rounded enough to fight people like Curtis Blades and Jalton Almeida. It's too much of a risk for him. But just sort of while we're on that topic, do you think with how much the heavyweight division is moving forward in their skill level, it's all these top high-level guys, do you think that there's going to be room for people like Taito Avassa, Derek Lewis, you know, these big hitters who are the most technical? You know, I love them a bit, but, you know. <laughs> I think at the moment, they've still got the place on the roster. Yeah. But the, the skill difference in the very top of the division compared to like the unranked heavyweights is so it's, it's just worlds apart. looks like a completely different organization. Mm. And I think that skill is going to trickle down through the rankings. Eventually you're going to like now, what is it like? Maybe the top five, six, they're all like fantastic. Well-rounders, well-rounded fighters, but it'll eventually be the top 10. They're all killers. Yeah. A bit like the lightweight division. You know, there's yeah. no, there's no real movement uh, chance for error in the lightweight no. division, which there won't be in the heavyweight division. Eventually, it will all trickle around, trickle down. But at the minute, they're all right. I mean, and Derek Lewis is probably in a good spot because he's a fan favourite. I think he's got... Is it the most knockouts that he does have in the UFC now? Something like that, yeah. It's and a he, lot. <laughs> and he's 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 quite seasoned himself, mm. so he probably doesn't have all that too long left. So he'll be all right. But in the future, I think if fighters are going to wanting to crack that top five ranking, the need to just be more well-rounded. It's not something that you can... Uh, train for just in 12 weeks is something that you know that like like tom like john jones you know they've been well-rounded throughout their entire career and they can do it all so i believe right now they're okay but eventually in time they will just fade into obscurity i think and it'll just be it'll look like the old blood bloodbath days in the ufc you know the tank abbott days and yeah his name cabbage do you remember cabbage that kind <laughs> no. of stuff? i'm pretty sure it was him I'll, have a look at that from like 94 <laughs> And that's the thing, though, isn't it? With the heavyweight division, because it's getting so skilled, it, there's getting less and less room for people like Tied to Avassa, Derek Lewis. Like, look at Ty against Tybora, you know, he got taken down, and it's like he'd never touched the map before in his life. And it's like, how have you got this far? But I think what will keep these big guys alive in this division, I think even for a long time, is that KO power. I think they're so big and so strong in the heavyweight division. If you hesitate for a second, your lights are out. Like, look at how good Tom Aspinall is, right? He's almost a perfect fighter. He's well-rounded. He's a great striker, fantastic grappler, incredibly good-looking. Uh, and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say we need to rename this video just the Tom Aspinall Appreciation Society. <laughs> but how skilled he is as a fighter. You could put him against Derek Lewis next week. He gets caught and he gets absolutely knocked out flat on his ass. And that's not, that's not, oh, it could maybe happen. That could happen very, yeah. very easily. And that's what's so dangerous about the heavyweight division. It's what makes it so exciting in a way. But, you know, either way, though, there's a lot of options for this division. And even though it's in limbo, we're getting into that new era of heavyweights. And I think it's a division you've got to keep in mind. Thank you for watching. If you can like, comment and subscribe, it really does help us out.